Good morning, everybody. It is God o'clock. Um, a type of bone to pick with God today, right? Because here's the thing. Everything I read in the Bible doesn't make sense the first time around or even the fifth time around. And some of it just feels pretty, pretty wrong. But let's get into it before I go anything further. So I'm in Numbers chapter five. And let's see, Numbers chapter five, verse 11. I want you to read this for yourself. I'm not going to say everything in it, right? But protecting marital faithfulness. And I feel like this is like timely for some reason, right? Like I know he had me like for a specific reason he brought me here. I think it's a test. Let's see. Give the following instructions to the people of Israel. Context, we just talked about make sure that there's purity in Israel's camp, right? So you want to make sure that if you are ceremonially clean or unclean, that we make sure you go out, get yourself ceremonially clean, and then come back into the camp. Because here's the thing. God is in the middle of the camp. And if you are ritually, if you are unclean, you are offending God, the people next to you, and you might get wiped off, right? And if, he doesn't want that. So he wants you to go ahead, be ritually clean, come back, because I'm the center of your, I'm literally the center of your house right now. So, protecting marital faithfulness, right? We're also, this one... I rest until it's still, it's still getting to me. Okay. So, suppose a man's wife goes astray and she is unfaithful to her husband and has had sex with another man. But neither her husband nor anyone else knows about it. She has defiled herself even though there was no witness and she was not caught in the act. Okay, right there, she is guilty. If her husband becomes jealous and is suspicious of his wife and needs to know, he must bring his wife to the priest. And then he brings uh, an offering, and the priest will present her to stand trial before the Lord. He takes holy water in a clay jar and puts some dust he took from the floor? Okay, it's giving me germs. It's giving me sick. It's giving me it's giving me a lot of like what if she's allergic to gluten? I don't know. <laughs> right? And then this is presented the woman. She must then he takes down her hair and puts in her hand the offering, the jealousy offering that her husband gave. Then the priest will stand before her holding the jar of bitter water because we just put dust in it because it's going to bring a curse to those who are guilty. Okay, pause. This makes sense. This part kind of makes sense. Okay, so she's guilty. Husband's like, I'm confused and I think you're cheated. And then they go, they bring the jealous offering, and she comes unbound before the Lord. Like, she can't hide anything at this point. Like, he put her hair down. She's natural in front of God. At least she's not naked. Okay. But here's the thing where I stop, right? What if it's just a jealous husband? What if he, what if she didn't cheat? And he's just like, well, I think she's cheating. Well, I think, you know, what if he's just insecure? And then she has to go through this a lot? Okay, let's see what this actually is. The priest will stand before her holding the jar with the curse that those who are guilty. He will then put the woman under oath and say to her, if no other man has had sex with you, you have not gone astray and defiled yourself. You, may you be immune from the effects of this bitter water. Well, Jesus, what are the effects of this bitter water? Now, I guess, okay, here's the safeguard, I guess, that God just put in place, I guess. May you be immune from the effects of the bitter water. 
if you are ill if you are innocent may you be immune so what are the effects let's see if you are guilty here at this point the priest must put the woman under oath by saying may the people know the lord's course is upon you, curse is upon you when he makes your when he makes you infertile causing your womb to shrivel and your abdomen to swell may this water put the curse into your body and cause your abdomen to swell and your womb to shrivel the woman will be required to say yes let it be so the priest will write these curses on a piece of leather and wash them off into the bitter water he'll make the woman bring on the water that brings on the curse when the water enters her body it will cause bitter suffering if she is guilty and then the priest starts throwing stuff into the fire into the altar um and it says again she will it'll curse if it happens but if she has not defiled herself and is pure then she will be unharmed and will still be able to have children this is the ritual law for dealing with suspicion the husband will be innocent of any guilt in this matter but his wife will be held accountable for her sin do i like that part yes because if she's wrong then she needs to come to jesus and she needs to fix that right but what if, and if she's not wrong, is she just drinking dusty water every time he thinks that she's cheating? Like, is there a number of times that he can do this? Because look, some, some partners are just jealous. Some partners are not going to be able to handle, I don't know. I don't know. And it's okay to not know. That's a big thing. It's okay to not know and to not understand it. Do I need to put some cultural context to it? Probably. If I think back, uh, women were property of their husbands. And even now, right? If she submits herself to him, if a wife submits herself to her husband and the husband submits himself to the Lord, then there's a hierarchy, right? So that, you know, kind of makes sense. But, okay. Here's the thing. A lot of times I come across things in the Bible that does... that. It, mm, it either goes against my, my... It goes against my me, okay? So, here is something that I always go back to. As you can see, we... I say always, that's not true. It's something that I can go back to. I'm not going to pose like I'm the best person when it comes to my Bible. Psalms 119, verse 73 and 74. You made me and you created me. Now give me the sense. Oh, to follow your commands may all who fear you find in me a cause for joy for I have put my hope in your word I put my hope in your word do I understand it no but if I keep going I know oh Lord that your regulations are fair you disciplined me because I needed it okay that yes now let your unfailing love comfort me, just as you promised me, your servant. Surround me with your tender mercies, so I may live. I don't need to see eye to eye with God, because that would be presumptuous of me. But I do need to trust that he is my rear guard, that he, that he will stand back to back for me. Not eye to eye, but back to back. For your instructions are my delight. You know when you were younger and your parents would be like, you can't do this, you can't do that. And you're like, I don't get it. And then when you were older, you got it. Or they told you more about it. 
I gotta still remember I'm a child of God. And when I grow up, he'll explain it to me because he loves me and he comforts me. All right, guys, if you have, if you can make any sense of it, please let me know <laughs> so that I can, um, I can have a little more rest in my spirit. I wouldn't say rest, right? Now it's just not in my spirit. It's more like rest in my mind. Because again, if my spirit trusts in God, then your word is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. I will obey your righteous regulations. So, Lord, please give me wisdom today to be able to handle not just like my job and my child and my regular everyday things, Lord, but my spiritual growth. I'm asking all these questions now, and that's, that's what you want. That's what you want. You want me to question. You want me to read. You want me to interact with the Bible. And it's okay for me not to get it. Help me to be okay with not understanding. Help me be okay and understand that your grace is sufficient. That your love is all I need. That you're my provider. And help me, help me to love you no matter what my human nature says. No matter what my, no matter what my cultural, progressive, <laughs> my non Old Testament mind, I guess you could. I wouldn't. I wouldn't even say that, Lord. I apologize because the whole Bible is yours. I apologize, Lord. Help me to be less worldly and more biblic, biblically. <laughs> Lord, you understand my heart, even if you don't understand my words. <laughs> May we have a blessed week and bless the person who's still watching this. Give them peace and love and joy and give them comfort and guidance. May we do pray and thank you. Amen.